Einstein's general theory of relativity describes gravity in terms of warps and curves in space and time. And it's the time part that shows us that a certain kind of time travel is allowed by the equations of the general theory of relativity. Let me describe how that goes. So imagine that we have a region of space and we've got a spaceship. And to keep track of time, we're going to put a clock on the ship and a corresponding one back on Earth. And now we're going to go on a journey. We're going to take the ship and go to the edge of a black hole. Careful not to fall over the edge, so we just hang out near the edge of the black hole. And Einstein tells us that time elapses more slowly in the presence of a strong gravity field, a strong gravitational potential, which means when the ship comes back, there's a time difference between the two clocks. In this case, a 30-year time difference between them. So if a person gets out of the ship and revisits with his or her friends on Earth, that person will find that their friends are 30 years older relative to the amount that he or she has aged. For this person, it's 2050. Everyone on Earth says it's 2080. That is time travel to the future, courtesy of general relativity, and in this case, time spent near the edge of a black hole. This is not at all controversial. Everyone who understands general relativity agrees that, at least in principle, this is how things work. The deep question, though, is, what about getting back? Can you travel back in time? And the thing is, we do not know the answer to that question. Most of us think it's not possible, but it's interesting that there are some proposals that have been put forward for how you just might be able to travel back in time. And let me describe one of them to you. It involves the idea of what's known as a wormhole. You may have encountered that in other settings. A wormhole is just a tunnel through space that acts like a shortcut. So if you want to go from this location to this location, you can go the long route on the outside, or you can go the short route through the wormhole itself. Now let's rerun that little scenario of a rocket going to the edge of a black hole, but now in the presence of a wormhole. So we bring in a rocket ship, imagine it can tow the mouth of a wormhole toward the edge of a black hole. And if we do that, We'll find, just as we did a moment ago, that time elapses more slowly near the edge of a black hole than far away. So if the ship then returns to the vicinity of Earth, by the time it gets back to its starting point, there'll be a time difference between the two clocks. Again, in this case, a 30-year time difference, just as we found before. Now notice, for the moment, the wormhole hasn't really played any role. It just went along for the ride. What we're now going to do is analyze exactly the same situation, but take the perspective of looking through the wormhole itself to see how time hooks up through the wormhole from one opening to the other. So let's do exactly the same experiment. Take that wormhole opening, tow it to the edge of a black hole. But now what we're going to do, as I mentioned, is look through the wormhole itself. And the math shows that the two clocks at each opening of the wormhole, when viewed through the wormhole itself, agree with one another. There is no time difference between them. And that's quite interesting because it means that when this rocket ship goes back to the vicinity of the Earth, if we now consider the two clocks, the one at this wormhole opening and the clock at that wormhole opening, those two clocks will agree with one another. So what we've done is we've looked at one and the same situation from two different perspectives. The first perspective was looking at how time hooks up outside of the wormhole, where we found a 30-year time difference. And the second perspective looked at how time hooks up through the wormhole, where we found no time difference at all. Now, it's not that one of these is right and the other is wrong. They're both correct, They're just analyzing the same situation from two different viewpoints. And that's where the power comes from. Because imagine we start at Earth at May 2080, and we go on a journey from one wormhole opening to the other, and now we want to go through the wormhole itself, which means we need to invoke this picture, the relevant one for time going through the wormhole. So we start here, we go into this picture, and we go through the wormhole itself, and we'll end up near Earth at May 2050. We started at May 2080 near Earth. We wound up at May 2050 near Earth. 
We've gone 30 years into the past. Time travel into the past. Now the reason I say this is speculative is that we don't know if wormholes are real. They do solve the equations of general relativity, but that doesn't mean they're actually out there in the universe. And even if they are real, nobody knows if you could pass through a wormhole. They seem to be unstable objects. The math seems to suggest you need some sort of exotic material to pry the throat of a wormhole opening so that it won't collapse in on itself. So with those two caveats in place, we don't know if wormholes are real, we don't know if they're stable, we at least come to this surprising conclusion that it's at least possible that time travel to the past might be something within the laws of physics. I should say most of us think that when we understand physics better, we're gonna find some way to rule this out. But as of today, it's still at least a tiny possibility that time travel to the past might actually be something that could be accomplished.